Welcome everyone back to another episode of the Landscurve Podcast, the Landscurve Show, whatever name you want to call it. It is what it is. We have our very special family member. He is not a guest. This is family here. Brother Dave Wren, you know that, that when he speaks, you got to break out with the pad and the paper and the pencil. Because if you listen to the other shows, which are on the Landscurve YouTube channel, landscurve.com, Everything he has said is quite prophetic. Everything he has shared with us, we are living right now. So it's going to be very interesting from this particular junction point in recorded history to hear what he has to say, because he is gifted in a way to tie things in that many will seem or think are unrelated and make us see it clearer. I respect him. I love him. I can't tell you enough good things about him. He is my brother and I love him dearly. Brother Dave, welcome back, and the floor is yours. Talk to us and enlighten us. <laughs> Lance, Lance, as, as always, uh, the Lance Scurve Show is my home. Uh, it's, yes. This is our platform as far as just totally always comfortable uh, with this. Is This is, you know, this isn't like sitting with some clients. This isn't sitting with some customers. This isn't sitting um, with people that you don't know this is this is our actually sitting home where you have a conversation you know at the end of the day or the end of the work week when you're sitting with people that you really tr truly care about and you're just having this, a discussion as to what the hell just happened <laughs> and what is what is going on um and so this is that place for me this is this is the platform for me. Um, it's been a part of my life since I met yes. Lance and, and Lance and I connected just from uh, when we were um, at, at um, uh, we were at. Um, oh, shoot. Uh, Econo uh, uh, Black Black Economics. Exactly. Uh, and, and Lance sent me a message um, from there and then. It just our relationship just grew from there. We were just talking and mm -hmm. I didn't know that he had the the podcast and boom, mm -hmm. it, it was just natural. You know, there's some people that you meet and you know right away that, hey, this is this is someone that um, I've known my whole entire life. I just may have just met. Right. But that was the connection that we have, you know, similar uh, growing ups that we were talking about. So this is my home. This is where I sit down and I speak to my brother. Yes. Um, and we just happen to record what, we're, what we talk about, <laughs> right. you know, yeah. it's um, organic. And, you know, Lance, yeah, Lance has his audience. And but it's it's really uh, Lance and I in, in just engaging just my thoughts That's on right. what's happening, because. Lance has a, a real sincere passion for people and for our tribe, just as I do. And we, we get exposed and we are made aware of different things that we want to share with, you know, our family, our friends, yes. our tribe, our, our, you know, our community. That's right. And that, that community is very much so, very much so myopic. It's, 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 it's a tribe. Uh, that is bonded by so many different things, not just the superficial uh, things, but mm -hmm. they, they are spiritually deeply connected. That's right. And so this is my place where uh, I come home. We've been real busy uh, growing oh, yes. <laughs> uh, prosperity mint. We've been real busy uh, putting things together. Uh, we've been real busy as we should be. Uh, just doing what, what, you know, it's easy doing what I love to do. There you go. And it's sometimes it's, it's, it's it has to end, but, um, I stay on this, this run because it's what I'm really designed to do is just like that little kid that you grew up with that had all, has all that energy will never sit down. And, and the thing is that the world is always trying to get that, that, that individual and that person to sit down. And they want them to sit down for different reasons. What really needs to do is that overall power needs to be given discipline so it can be directed in a very beneficial way. So it's not a bomb. Yes. 
And that is, you know, when you start to go through life, you see what your overall uh, and ambitions and your passion and what your vocation should be. Uh, you know, for me, I attacked it like a, 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 a child that ever, everyone was trying to tell to sit down. <laughs> and the thing was, I listened, right? Even though I listened, but I still, my mind, my spirit, my, my, my soul, my projection was still running. Right. And it, it, it ran even when I was physically sitting, and so I think that that's how, you know, it has really helped me and it's helped you, Lance, with so many things that you do is because even though we have a physical body that needs to be restrained, our overall spiritualness um, is is untamed and it is it is untamed in a very beneficial way and and i really do appreciate it and so lance you and i have connected i know exactly what i was doing when i got your 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 text <laughs> just got off the the uh the air at uh black economics and was um was getting ready to take a trip to uh to seattle washington I was going to uh, wow. drive up to Seattle, Washington, and, and on that drive, that's where we talked. And, and Lance and I talked for hours. I don't know if you remember that <laughs> first time. That. We, I remember that. We we talked for hours. I was driving up to Seattle, Washington, and we talked for hours, and we connected, and we've never stopped since then. And so it's always good to be home. I just want to say Happy New Year uh, to the Skirt Hallelujah. family. Happy New Year to uh, all of the o- listening audience. And this is going to be, I will tell you, this is going to be a memorializing year because the stuff that we are going to experience, I tell you, write it down so that you could be a recorder of the truth. Because I'm telling you, history is going to lie so much about this, (laughs) this, this time that we're that we're in right now and what we're going to be experiencing. But I think that you could do yourself and your family and your your loved ones uh, a great service be in a position that you're prepared so that you rec- so that you can honestly and and rightfully record the truth yes beautifully said and it's hard to re- it's hard to record the truth when you're struggling mm. it 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 really is is because the thing about trying to record this, the truth when you're struggling is that you're having to to actually deal with realistic truths and that energy, you know, just being able to deal with that, it requires so much energy that it's not a time to record, yes. you know? And, and and that's one of the things, if you look at history, the, the, I, I want to just, I'm going to just say the shit starters, the instigators, <laughs> They're able to record history because they stir and they cause the problem and they sit back and watch it and they write their truths. Mm. So I think it's important that we put ourselves in a position of advantage and have options. Then those options, we can start to record, record some real truths, some real generational wealth transferring truths, some reverse, uh, gentrification truths some prosperity restored truths from the prosperity that has been lost and i will tell you if we don't heed the truth the truth one of the things is 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 very important is that the truth is no respect of person it either resonates in you or it doesn't and if it doesn't resonate within you it doesn't care it doesn't go back for you it doesn't try to coach you it doesn't try to get you to change your overall your your energy or your frequency it does none of those things because that's the thing about the truth it's gonna it's going to see and and realize that you are who you are that's why truth is so important because it doesn't need you and i but we need it And I think that if we truthfully look at what happened historically and look at what we're going to be dealing with in the future, 
we won't come up with this fairy fairy tale that people back then didn't know that things were wrong, that the frequency was off. And we never talk about that because you already know that something is wrong and some things is, is not right. And you have to tie into that frequency wise to know that you need to really get yourself ready for what's coming because there's something wicked that is upon us is already here and it's starting to unfold itself. So it's, you know, it's, I, I live by this, you know, ignorance of the law is no excuse, but it is a liability. You're liable for which you and I, we're liable for what we don't know and especially what we ignore and what we, and we allow ourselves to be um, misguided in. I mean, what I mean by misguided, there's no way in the world that you could ever expect truthfulness to come from a devil's tongue so why do we give ear to it and and what 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 do i mean by that we already know that this system is put in a position to subjugate us to enslave us why do we try to continue to engage in the system that is inimical to our interests I don't get it. That's because we've been taught and schooled in that. But just because you're taught and schooled in something does not mean that you were your makeup is that you can always return to your makeup. So why am I saying all of this? I'm saying all of this because everyone here listening will have the opportunity to endure the greatest empire demise and when this titanic sinks it's going to take everybody down with it but the thing about this titanic is that it's more of a submarine than it is a titanic and what i mean by that is that it's going to sink with all of its ports and windows open so it will drown the people then you know what it's going to do mm. it's going to is going to push out all of the water and then it's going to resurface. And when it resurfaces, it's going to resurface without damage. But all of the occupants will be dead. Wow. That's what we're really going into. It's a submarine. It's not a Titanic. Mm. It's not. It is built to take all of its passengers to the bottom with the windows, with the ports, uh, portals, and the hatches open. So they'll drown. And then it has the overall ability and forbearance to be able to push out the sea and resurface. And you know when it resurfaces, you know what it's going to do? Go pick up more passengers, but it's going to look more like a Titanic than it is a submarine and is going to take them on a journey all over the world for years before it starts to slowly start to mutate back into a submarine and take those passengers generationally back to the bottom. Wow. That's how the system works. And our thing is, I don't know about you, but you can't give me a ticket on the Titanic. I won't buy it. I won't buy a ticket on the Titanic. And if I if, if I'm pushed on the Titanic, what I'm always going to be doing is I'm going to be looking for the life raft and the way off that baby. That's right. And it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be popular because everybody is going to be partying, having a good time. No, no, no. We need to be doing. They're going to be comfortable and they're going to be fighting for survival of placement on that Titanic. When the thing is, you should have abandoned ship a long time ago. So we want to help the on onboard passengers of the USSS Titanic slash submarine get prepared to abandon ship and get prepared to deal and deal with the rough seas that they're going to be on now that this has brought now that this ship has got us out in the middle of the frigid ocean 
So that overall will cause us to want to stay on board because we don't know of anything else to hold on to. One of the things you have to hold on to is your own energy to survive. Your own willingness to never give up. Your own willingness in in spite of the adverse situations, we can make it. Especially if we can make it, if we got everything that we need to make it, it's going to make the journey easier. And then what we'll find out is that there's going to be opportunity along the way. There's going to be those islands of refuge along our journey. That's where we are right now metaphorically speaking but we're going to speak more directly but i will tell you lance in everyone listening this is the final call really this is you know the last call you you you've been out when they say last call this is the last call to prepare because we are going to i believe this this coming 12 months mm-hmm. Is not going to be a, po- a position to prepare. It's going to be a position of response. How are you going to respond to this? And you want to respond to this with the with the abilities and the overall uh, uh, wherewithal and the stability of surviving. Not only surviving, because surviving is one thing. Once you start getting ready for this, you've already made it. But now you're positioning yourself to thrive. That's what I really want to do. And I'll give you, give you an example of that, mm-hmm. Lance. I want you just like think about it. Let's say you have um, a couple and both couples have their parents um, and they've gotten to the point where their parents are now, you know, older um, and maybe, you know, maybe one of the parents have already made the great transformation um, and they start. They're in that phase. And then finally, the, the, the couple gets to the point where both of their parents have made the great transformation. And, you know, when that happens, you have to go home. Right, Lance? Exactly. You have to go home. Yeah. And when you go home, say mom and dad is no longer there there and then as one spouse's uh parents uh, let's say you go to to the the father's the husband's house and he's going through mom and dad his mom and dad's stuff and his his wife is going through her mother-in-law and father-in-law stuff with her husband and they're going through stuff and they notice there that they had a lot of stuff a lot of consumer stuff right Mm -hmm. Dresses and all of this stuff, suits. But, you know, the thing about life is that you're a different size throughout your life. Right. That's right. Some of some of the dresses can't be worn again. Some are heirlooms. Some are, you know, uh, kept as as, you know, chosen family treasures. But guess what? You basically take the take that stuff and say, hey, we need to clean out this house. That stuff's got to go to Goodwill. Right. Right. So what do you throw away? What are you throwing away from the, the the husband's house of his mom and his dad? The consumer stuff that has no more value. I mean, as far as it can be recycled to be used again. Right. But it's not if you're not your if he's not his dad's size and if that stuff doesn't fit him, he can't wear it. That's right. Right. And if he doesn't find someone in the family that can wear it, he can't give it to him. Not he has to give it to somebody else. Right. Right. So they're starting to get rid of clothes. And his mom, she went through different sizes. She had let's say she had different children, you know, so she went through, you know, when she got married, she was a a size zero by the time, you know, that she could have been a size 20. Right. Mm -hmm. Natural progress in the life. Right. So the different sizes, not everybody could wear what she had. Right. In the family. So you're getting rid of that stuff. They had shoes. um, They had uh, different things. They had some things of value, uh, you know, uh, maybe some some antiques and everything else. Yes, those are cool. But, you know, a lot of them still don't work. Right. Because if they had them, they probably used them and and just they want to preserve in in the right way. Right. right. You know, because they were in the house for years and years and years. And this is real important that we understand this, this story, because this is critical to what's going to put us in a position of advantage going forward. 
as we go through this, this, you know, empire, you know, uh, the death of this empire. And the thing about the death of this empire is the empire is not going to die. It's just going to kill its citizens. It's going to sacrifice and consume its citizens. So you go through the house, uh, the couch, you can't use that anymore because they got that couch back when they were teenagers <laughs> and they lived into their 80s. Right. Long time. <laughs> yeah. Long time. It, so the, it is it's worn. It's the, the furniture is as old as them. But, the, you know, they got it a long time ago. But that was good furniture. They used to it still has some, you know, it still can be used. Right. But nobody nobody wants it because it's not appealing now. Right. Right. Uh, it's out of style. Nobody uses, nobody has that anymore, right? So you continue through and everything. And so they finally clean out the house and they realize that out of that whole house, let's say the house was 2,000, 2,200 square feet or 2,300 square feet. Out of all of that stuff, they got rid of, and everybody said this when they came in, we got rid of a lot of the junk. Some of the stuff that that that, that the parents had, they kept pictures and different things there there were different mementos that were you know treasured and everything else but the line share of it did what went to goodwill went to the trash bin or just was not used anymore right you think about it his parents worked their whole lives to accumulate those things right that are being now thrown out when they made the great transformation. Wow. So what, what did, what, what really happened with their stuff? Their consumer based stuff has an expiration date of usability True. of value. Right. And I, I definitely, you can't, buy what they have today at the entry point that they bought it with. That's right. You can't do that. That's for sure. Right. But a line share of the stuff is thrown out. And some of the stuff that has value was most of that stuff. And just in this scenario is just personal mementos. Right. Right. Personally important to you. Now, there are some there will be some things that have some value. Right. But the line share stuff is no longer relevant. OK, so that's that house. They get rid of that house. Mm-hmm. Then, long, you know, lo and behold, they have to go to the wife's house. The husband helps the wife in the same way and they go through. They're running across the same thing. But this time in this family. The wife's mother and father saved money not cash because cash is trash even the cash that the the husband mother and father had had lost his purchasing power through inflation so that savings was never savings they were they they actually worked a dollar's hour but they got paid a penny's wage diminishing returns Think, very important. They worked a dollar's they worked a dollar's worth of energy output in their day, but they got paid in a penny's wage. Very important. So even that is is lost through inflation. Very important point. Now you go to the wife's house, and within their house, there's what this would happen. The mother and father actually saved money. And that money was in silver and gold. Was in silver and gold. They've made the transformation. But what were they able to do since they had silver and gold? They were able to store the energy of their labor and give it to their children as a inheritance of wealth going forward. That silver and gold is just as valuable as the day that they started to have control of it. When the husband and wife took control of that silver and gold, the value of it was still there. Never diminished. Amazing. So now when they cleaned out everything in that, in, in that side of the family's house, 
But the difference is this. They're leaving with a promise of prosperity because their mother and father was wise enough to save in money. And guess what that means? Not only did the value of the money outlast their overall living days, it's going to outlast the living days of their family members that they have yet not named. It's just that valuable. Its value never dies. The only way the value of it is lost is that the value loses its overall physical existence. Then it's no longer a physical form of money any longer. But think about it. What did the mother and the father know that was, what was the real evidentiary truth of the mother and father that they knew? They knew that they loved their family enough to save. They knew that they loved each other enough and they had an obligation to save. Even though they never had to use it, here's the case. Lance, even though the mother and father of the uh, of the wife, they never had to use their silver and gold. Guess what? What did they lose? Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Nothing at all. Even the mother and father uh, uh, of the husband. If they were to use some of the stuff that they bought years ago, none of it really had real it had mostly consumer value. They weren't able to use it. But what was the daughter's? mother and father able to do that overall money in silver and gold that they saved never lost purchasing power never lost value they could have used it up until the day they made the great transformation wow why why is that because the precious metals brings a promise of prosperity that's outside of man's hands Yes. Beautifully. You broke that down. Wow. And so and so when you think about it, when you really think about it, what is that husband and wife going to do when they walk out with the overall royal treasures of their mother and father? What is the daughter going to do? What is the husband going to do with the with the overall royal treasures of his mother-in-law and his, his father-in-law? And what is the daughter going to do with the royal treasures of her mother and father? You know what they're going to do? They're going to cherish it. And they're going to put themselves and the rest of their family in a position that they could never lose either. If they never got the value, then they would get it now. If they're not so addicted to cash that the first thing that they try to do is do what? Exchange it for cash right. instead of using it as money. That's the key. Because there is a, that's the key. You have to use most people get precious metals and they just hold it. Well, if the mother and if the if the mother and father were clients of mine. Believe me, they know what to do with it. And they had so much. But not only what did they they had value in their lives, because that's what we teach our clients. And I'm going to tell you, nothing that's going to leave that house is going to go into trash. Everything <laughs> is going to go into trust. Because it's all valuable. And it's all going to continue to give value. Why am I saying that? I'm saying this because of we are about to experience the death of an empire. And what happens in the death of an empire is its citizens and its taxpayers that are sacrificed. And if you're not ready and prepared for that, believe me, everything that you've been schooled is that you've been schooled to do what? Be the sacrificial lamb of the controllers of resources. And I want people to really think about that. A lot of people will say, well, David, I hear this from people. Well, 
they're not going to destroy the economy because that would hurt them. No, it wouldn't. They don't, the, the, the controllers of resources don't think like a person that gets a slave wage. They don't accept slave wages, That's but right. they give them. And so they darn sure don't, they damn sure don't think like slave wage holders. That's what slave wage people say and think because they've been actually taught that. They've been actually schooled in that. Let me give you this example of, of, uh, and people, I think, would really get it, Lance. Think about it, Lance. I want you to think about something that you purchased and that you really wanted to buy, right? And if you really wanted to buy it, let's say you never really think about the process it got, it, it, it had to take to come to market for you to buy it. If it's a chair or if it's a table, you didn't think about the wood that the tree that had to be killed or or, or or cut down to make that. You don't think about that process. No, you know, no. <laughs> the, the, the diamond or the gold, the, the people that had to mine, mine that and use mercury to get. You don't think about that process because of this. You go into it and you just go into, let's say you want a diamond or you want some jewelry or you want uh, a, a high dollar uh, uh, item or something that you really like, you never ask when you go in to buy that, what was the process for this to come to market? People don't think that way because what do they think? Am I in a position to buy it? I've been wanting this my whole time, my whole life, and I got this opportunity to buy it. I'm going to get it. They don't think about the process or the pain or the sacrifice or the enslavement to bring that to market, do they? No, they don't. Wow. They don't think about that process. When you go to buy something that you've always wanted, you never you never really think about how did this get to me? How about this? Who was killed or who was enslaved so that I could have this? Don't think about that. Do we, Lance? You're right. <laughs> don't think about it. We we think about, oh shoot. I'm going to get the latest. I'm just using this as, as an example. Oh, shit. I'm going to get the latest iPhone. I'm going to get the latest Jordans. We don't. I'm going to get this. I'm just saying that as I'm not y- using that as I'm just using that as a reference. Right, right. Or I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that item. We don't think about what the toil was, what the evil was to bring that to market. We don't think about that. We just think about, can I get it? Will I be able to get that valuable? What I consider to be something is, you know, valuable just because we consider something to be valuable doesn't mean it is. It's valuable to us. But even if it is something of intrinsic value or valuable to us, what do we think about? We think about the overall buy, the, the, the buy and sell exchange only. What do I got to give to get it? Right, Lance? That's what we think, right? We don't go any deeper. Don't go any deeper. Well, let me show you how the people that were resources and how the system, the economic system thinks. They don't care if you starve, if you die, if you work all the, all of the hours, never have anything. They never think of the process for them to control resources. They just want to control resources. This is why they will destroy the economy in order to make profit off of it. They don't think about the human toil, nor do they give a damn. That's not their problem. Their problem is what? Acquiring something that they know has value. So whenever people think that 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 they won't destroy the system, you're lying to yourself and you're misleading yourself. And because you're not ready, you're too scared to get ready. So you go into a overall denial state and that is going to make you the perfect predator. I mean, that's going to make you the perfect prey for the perfect predator. Truth. They don't care about who gets hurt they just care about controlling what they know is valuable they don't think about the 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 chain of custody they care about controlling the asset and when you think about that like you don't care nor do they 
And when you look at it that way, you realize something. I better care about me. I better care about my family. I better care about my community. I better care because someone else is controlling resources. And when you control resources, you tell people what plantation they're to report to. And you don't want to be the one that gets the overall notice of report when you don't have to. When you don't have to. So when people say, why would they destroy the, 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 the economic system? Oh, same reason why. Why did you buy something that you thought was valuable? Because you knew it was and you wanted to control it. That's what they're all about. They do not care about the collateral damage. Why should they? You didn't care about it either. So that's the mentality. So with that mentality, what's so dangerous about that? Here's what's so dangerous about that mentality. Is that if that mentality exists. In order for people to really control resources, they have to admit that mentality exists and they have to do something about it what is it that they do about it they teach you not to know value of anything but the price of everything because then you'll never be in competition for what they want to control wow so they're going to school you to be the perfect slave and to be the perfect sacrificial lamb While they accumulate wealth, control, prosperity, legacy. Is it illegitimate? Is it wrong? Is 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 it malevolent? Yes. At the levels that at the levels that some things are done. Absolutely. But you have to remember something. They've been schooled and educated in something different than you. They've been schooled not in price, but in value. And they have to compete against everyone else that knows what they know. Because whoever has the greatest control of resources can now, after they eat through the general population of enslavement, guess who they start to eat next? The controllers of very little wealth that aren't committed to it. So it is a perpetual cycle. And I just really want to get our tribe in line for this fight, because I will tell you something. If marching mattered, you'd have walked all over this problem. If speeches mattered, you would have talked this shit to death. If voting mattered, you would already have your own country, your own continent, your own sovereignty. And if begging mattered, Mm. you would never be hungry. You would never be exhausted. What is the only thing that really matters? Understanding that this is how the system works. And what are the things that I need to do to position myself so I'm not manipulated by this system? I have a bit of sovereignty against it so I can resonate in my own way. And there are things that you can do and you have to be educated in those things because you're not going to get schooled in it. They're they're not going to have a overall. They're not going to have a accredited course for that. Just not going to happen. Because it's not in, in, in the system's interest for the slaves to decide that you know what? I'm going to invoke my birthright. 
Houston, we have a problem. Right? So, I want as many people, especially within our tribe, to be able to at least have a choice and follow that choice too. Some people are fine with, hey, I know it, I'm cool with it, or I I know that I don't know, I don't want to, you know, I don't care. Some people want to sit on the Titanic and think that it's a beautiful luxury liner. <laughs> you know, uh, some people do. But some people realize that they're trapped on this prison and they better do something to get off. In a survivable way, because they know staying on is 100 percent not survivable. Right. So. What are some of the things we're going to we are in a unique position? We've been telling, you know, we talked about. The war. Most people think that World War Three is about to start. No, World War Three has already started a long time ago, already been fought, already been lost. Now we're going to go into global nuclear war one. First time we're global, we're nuclear nation capable nations go to war mm-hmm. with each other. Some people said, you know, because when 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 the U.S. dropped the two uh, atomic um, devices in Japan, Japan didn't have any any nuclear capabilities to respond. Right. So that wasn't a nuclear fight. That wasn't a nuclear war. But see, now other countries have the ability to respond nuclearly. nuclearly. And so because of that, what do you have? This will be global nuclear war one. And somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. And I already know who's going to lose. It's the same people that lost in the last one. <laughs> it's the same people that lost in the first one. It was the same people that lost in World War Three. World War Two and World War One. Some people say, well, there's never been a World War Three. Yes, it has. Because they didn't announce it. You're going to not, you're only going to report the propaganda that they have, then you're going to have a hard way to go soon. You're probably having a hard way to go already. And a hard way to go is because we, you, you, we rely on them telling us what to think and what side to take. So, it's going to be the same losers as World War One, World War Two, and World War Three. And you know who that is, Lance? It's the people. That's right. Sad enough. It's the people. Mm-hmm. Same one's going to lose this global nuclear war one. Russia's not going to lose. The United States isn't going to lose. France, Germany, Poland, China, they're not going to lose. Oh, but I guarantee you this. Their citizens will be scorched. Their citizens will be infirmed. Their citizens will be broken, murdered, and sacrificed. But those overall entities and them corporations, they're going to survive. And they're going to thrive because they operate from a different level than their citizens. But now, as a citizen, can you operate in that level within your own means? Yes. And will that give you a measure of protection? One hundred percent. Well, but will it guarantee that you'll be fine? No, it will just give you more options and opportunity to do what? Get out of harm's way. Get out of harm's way. So we are going into global nuclear war one. But not only are we going into that, we're going into the greatest default in debt in recorded economic history. The global debt is completely unsustainable and it's going to have to default, but it's going to need someone to blame it on. And this is where you're going to have the deportation of the United States lifestyle and agenda globally. Mm. They're going to blame it on the U.S. Rightfully so. Yes. Sincerely so. 
so? No, because that system was created for that overall, uh, uh, that overall out in that overall Manchurian uh, uh, candidate could be there. So there is going to be your, we are going to, everyone here in the States is going to live through the deportation of the United States lifestyle and agenda. And when that happens, when they deport, when there's deportation, they're going to deport the debt, the currency, the influence, well, before on some things, they're going to deport all of the bad stuff and they're going to take back and seize the things of value. This country is going to go into receivers and asset forfeiture. But when I say the country, I'm talking about the general population, the citizenry is. Right. Because who was the debt? Who is responsible for the debt of the United States? It's not the United States government, folks. It's the citizens and taxpayers' debt. Hold on. You didn't know that? Wait a minute. How many of you want to take on your neighbor's debt while your neighbor buys a $22 million home, finances it, finances 25 cars, a Bugatti, all this other stuff, right? They finance all of this high end stuff, finance jewelry and everything else, but you got to pay for it. And when you go into default from not paying for it, guess what they do? They don't go to them to take it from them. Guess who they take it from? You. How many of you would like that scenario? Well, you're living it every day. Think about it. This government is able to create debt it doesn't pay. Make laws it doesn't have to obey and declare wars it doesn't have to fight. So true. Who's the who's the opposite end of that? The citizens have to pay the debt, obey the laws, fight the wars. And they setting you up to default on all three. Here's how. The citizens is going to default on the debt. When you default on the debt, you're going to go into receivership and they're going to take your assets. Well, you say I don't have any assets. Yes, you do. It's your butt. They're going to make you work in 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 unbearable conditions for for hours that you've never done before. Not going to pay you anything. So. Then they are going to create laws because of now you have to pay back. Your country has to pay back for putting the rest of the world in a in a nuclear war situation with collateral damage all over the world. You're going to have to pay rep, uh, reparations, restitution. Excuse me. You're going to have to pay res restitutions. They're going to make laws that U.S. citizens are going to have to pay that restitution. Uh oh. Do you know what that means? That means that even the wages that you get paid, you're only going to have pennies on it anyhow, because it's going to be have to go back to restitution. Then they're going to create a war that you're going to have to fight and be the overall soldiers. Soldiers takes orders while a soldier can never do what a warrior thinks. A soldier takes order, orders. A warrior fights for sovereignty. And they caught you in all of this propaganda. And so the world is going to have deportation of the U.S. currency. When that happens, folks, you're going to have a a immediate change in this country, the quality of life and standard of living of everybody that is not prepared is going to collapse. But what's going to happen is going to be so many people miserable with it. It's going to do what they embedded this overall demonic 
saying into everyone is that what misery loves company well when i'm miserable i don't love no company <laughs> when i'm miserable i want the misery to stop not the company to come it's a trap it's a psychological trap so you're going to have situations where the deportation of the currency and when that happens all of the cash and there's more u.s cash in the world than any other currency and all that's going to come back here and that means that the overall currency that you use to live by and you get paid with is going to be worthless and you know what they're going to do you know what the wise is going to do you know what the the well, excuse me, you know what the, the controllers of resources is going to do and the wise is going to do? The wise person and people are going to see that and they're going to protect themselves from that. And there's only one way to protect yourself from that. Is you have to have money. You have to have things that have intrinsic value. Because guess what? They're not deporting that. Do you really think, Lance, that countries is going to deport U.S. gold and U.S. silver back to the to the United States? No, <laughs> because silver and gold has no nation of origin. It's not a citizen. It's a living being. It has intrinsic value that doesn't have personship or citizenship. It has existence. They're not going to send one ounce of gold or silver back. As a matter of fact, it's just the opposite. You know what they're going to do? They're going to require that the gold and silver that's held within the country get what? That they repatriate all of their gold and silver out the U.S. All of their all of their uh, um Assets of intrinsic value, they're going to be pulling it out of U.S. because they're going to want what? They're going to want the control with them, not with here. Smart move. Then they're going to deport. They're going to deport the ideology and the lifestyle of the U.S. What does that mean? Remember, you heard that the U.S. is a first world nation, not a third world country. Right. Well, many countries believe that is is because they've been stealing their overall assets for their overall spoils. You know what they're going to do? They're going to say, no, nope, no longer does the U.S. make any economic policy that we need to follow. And the first thing that's going to do is going to do this. That's going to destroy the overall quality of life and standard of living of every person here that's not prepared because you're not going to be able to have a currency that will be able to buy their intrinsic goods for nothing. You pay them nothing. They get you give them worthless and they give you priceless. I talked about this before. You remember when you saw the cash for gold places all over the place, all right? All the time. Lance, years and years ago. Yes. That was soft mining. That was soft mining. They were telling you to bring in your priceless gold and silver and we'll give you worthless pieces of cash. Well, if you think about it, the U.S. the citizens, the U.S. citizens lifestyle was based off of that because they were able to deport the debt to the rest of the world and get assets which made their currency strong enough so that you could buy things that had real value. But it was a temporary window. For you to be able to do that, they allowed that to happen because they knew that the currency was going to die and they were using that to acquire assets while everybody else in this country was taught not to compete with them for those assets and to get consumer goods shit. A consumer's mentality. And Lance, if you needed to beep beep that out, that's cool. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> that's no. that's cool, but it's no. it's just real talk, keep and it it's because of where we out. really are. That's right. We're not beeping anything out you say unless you required that. But no. it's, it's 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 really where where we are. Yeah. We are going to experience the overall collapse of the common person's economy in this country. We're on the brink, and anybody who's not prepared for that. The overall conditions and the 
in the uh, environment that that will bring is nothing that you've ever experienced before. Mm. Here in the States, we have first, first world problems. We're about to experience fourth and fifth world trauma. I see it. Why fourth and fifth world trauma? I will tell you, folks, they're going to open back up debtors prisons. And those debtors prisons is that Ooh. you're going to have to work and not get paid for anything. Ooh. And the labor that you're going to be have to expend and they don't care how old you are. Because remember, I already showed you how the overall controllers of assets think. They don't care the chain of custody to get the assets. They just care about controlling it. They don't care that you get put into a overall slave factory workforce. Mm. They're going to open them up. And the only place that you're going to be able to eat is if you go to one. Oh, God. Dang. What in history tells it that this is true? I will tell you this. Ignorance doesn't tell you this is true. You know what tells you this is true? Evidence. Evidence of societal collapse in the past tells you that this is going to happen. And these are the things that's going to happen. Ignorance doesn't excuse you from the law, and it definitely doesn't excuse you from the liability of being ignorant. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by ignorant of what happens when these things happen, everybody here already knows that, you know, Lance, when we first came on and started talking about different things, you remember what happened in the comments? People like ah that and ah that, oh, right? You remember, remember some of the comments and and then the the the, the comments and, and you know and and I would tell Lance, you don't you don't have to ever respond to right. you know and and Lance is good. I love Lance. Lance allows you to do you and allows the, the, the listener to say what they want to say. But what Lance doesn't do is that hey, you're not going to say. David said something that he didn't say. Exactly. Don't that's but if you don't have a different opinion, a different view of things, yes, all for it. We need to learn. But we we, we don't allow the mischaracterization of anything. So Lance, you remember that ah, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> Yep. And the keyboard warriors. Before before COVID, we were telling them, you better get ready. This is coming. Before this war, before all of these things. And now we sit now and a lot of people start to see that, oh, shoot, there is no such thing as a conspiracy theory. There's just a conspiracy agenda. That's right. It's a conspiracy a consp a agenda. There's a bunch of institutions and people conspiring for your demise and they're not conspiring for your demise to kill you they're conspiring for your demise through what they want to control the asset to become wealthy and there's a, con a chain of command i mean a chain of custody to get that and mm -hmm. they don't care what it takes to acquire it they just want to get control of it no doubt debtors prisons oh man don't open up all of that you know the the states we see one of the things is that they put those laws on the books and once you put a law on a the book they may not enforce it but guess what they can turn around and reinforce it when they took when they got jim crow laws on oh they just don't enforce those anymore but guess what it was still a law they never erase a law because you know why lance because they may have to come back to use it later on they may want to use it. They may want to employ it. They may now want to enforce that later on. Frightening. The truth. And so we are in a position that we need to prepare. How do you pair? prepare? One, you have to understand the steps to do that. Plain and simple. Why do you need to understand the steps to do that? Because if you're unaware of this, if you don't see this happening, you darn sure are not going to know what to do once it arrives. Give you an example of that. Lance, how many people do you think 
that was when we were telling them stuff that the ha, da, 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 crowd. <laughs> How many people do you think that when COVID hit that they was in line for toilet paper? Guarantee you they were. Exactly. They was in line for toilet paper while they were passing up valuable food. They wanted to get worthless pieces of paper. Because we've been indoctrinated in school to do that. Mm-hmm. We've been indoctrinated to go to the worthless so that the priceless can be harvested by someone else at a at an entry for profitability. You got to we got to walk away from that mentality. Right. Because until we wake up, walk away from that mentality, we will always be in a position of what? Bankruptcy. Yes. We got more liabilities than we have assets. We're rich, but never be wealthy. Rich is something that can be snatched from you from you at a moment's notice by the economy. Yes. Wealth wealth can't they can never snatch wealth from you. You know what happens when you're wealthy? You tell it what to snatch from the rich. You tell the economy what to take from the rich. So you have to know these things. Why do, why is this so important? Because I tell you folks, once they change this currency in this country, when they change this currency to be backed by an asset, if you're not in position for that, you're going to fall into an economic caste system. And the economic caste system means this. How you enter is how you will die. How you enter is what you will pass on as inheritance. One of the things about the system that we're in now is a debt system is this. One of, one of the, 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 the things about the, the positive things about a debt system is this. It it gives the opportunity for the slave to become king or queen. If you are in a debt system and you know how to do it, you can go from being a slave to being sovereign. (laughs) In a caste system, there is no exit. And we're probably going to endure that for a couple of generations. Because it's cyclical. They change this all around. Mm -hmm. So we are going to go into once this uh, this global debt in this U.S. debt defaults is really the global debt and then the U.S. debt in its which is already defaulting. Once people don't want that currency to have no longer faith anymore, then think about it. Would you have faith in that person that you have to pay for their all of their debt living and then you have to pay for it, but they get to keep all of the assets that they acquire with it, but you have to pay for the debt. How upset are you going to be at that person? Very much maddening. Yeah. But if that person, but if that person tricks you by saying, Hey, use my coupon to buy everything you have. And you don't know that that coupon is making them wealthy, but is making you uh, economic disenfranchises is about bringing about your economic franchise. They trick you with it. Guess what? You're going to keep doing it willingly and not even know. That's right. We're being economically disenfranchised and don't even know. So you're not going you're not going to be happy with that. You're not going to want to put up with that person's debt. And if that person ever wants to borrow or or, or borrow something else that you're going to have to pay for, you're going to have to say, whoa, no, I'm going to put a stop to this. How do you stop this? You have to become a prodigious saver in items and in money that has intrinsic value. Now, what does money and assets make you? uh, uh, What does it give you immunity from? Assets gives you immunity from debt default. When you have assets, you can never go into debt default. And if you structure yourself correctly, structure yourself correctly, it can never be removed from your control. But you have to know these things because these are systematic things that work and have been working for a while. It's Mm -hmm. put 
the, the global situation in, in what it is. So you have to learn these things. Also, it's going to be a situation that when they change this currency around and back it with an asset, and if you're not prepared for that, you're not going to be able to afford the asset. You will have no opportunity ever to acquire the asset because the value of the asset will be more valuable than, than anything that you control. So now your options are taken away from you. And when your options are taken away from you, it puts you on your knees begging the very people that created the problem for you, you begging them to give you relief. And guess what they're going to do? Give you momentary relief to subjugate you even more. They're going to give you a placebo of pain relief while increasing the overall control of your valuable energy to be sacrificed and harvested for them even more. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. I know about you, Lance and I. No, I know. I don't want to. I don't want to engage in that. And so the, I realize if I don't want to engage in that, then there are some real systematic systems and processes that I have to do to make myself as immune to that as possible. So that's where we are, folks. I can give you all of the breakdown of what's going on in the world. Why this stuff? I I will tell you this. It doesn't matter if you don't first prepare to be able to sidestep this wicked weather and climate that's coming. Because if you're not going to be able to sidestep it, is going to is going to sweep you up into it and it's going to push you anywhere it wants to, to to take you. And you're not going to have any options during that time. We always say you can't prepare for a storm once the storm comes. You got to prepare for it when the sun is shining. That's right. Well, it's cloudy now, y'all. In 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 the overall first bands of of the weather is starting to hit the window and opportunity to prepare is closing diminishing. Yeah. Yep. And so is it a scary situation? Hell yeah. It's scary. If you're not prepared, (laughs) but if you're prepared, you're not scared. There's nothing to be scared of if you're prepared. And that's what, what happens within our tribe that the warning in the heed and it's more than just a warning. Don't warn me only. Yes. Give me a warning, but also tell me what I need to do to make sure that this doesn't, the worst of this doesn't affect me and my responsibilities. That's what really matters. So Lance, we're having a seminar. Yes. Um, and we're opening up for new clients. Lance has the flyer. You're more than welcome uh, yes. for our new clients. You will actually have a virtual seminar uh, the 14th or 15th of January. You would pick the day. Then you would have to come to Dallas for our in-person seminar on the, uh, Friday the 20th here in Dallas. And then you will meet up with some of our other clients, our existing clients, on the uh, 21st and 22nd that weekend. Um, Saturday and Sunday, uh, you will be uh, co-joined with our existing clients. But our new clients, uh, we ha- we're, we're having a seminar and conference. At the seminar and conference, I sent the, the, the overall right. uh, flyer to land. It's, it's going to be um, how to profit in the pre- precious metals, how to engage in this new economic downturn, how to get prepared for, for what's uh, 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 about to happen here. And then you're going to be able to establish uh, networking uh, support groups. You will learn trust and foundations, how to use those structural things to protect yourself. 
how to prepare, how to um, actually profit from, uh, I said that already, but uh, profit from the precious metals and, and what that really means and how that benefits you. So it's going to be probably our last opportunity to get people away from the submarine called Titanic. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, G- January, the for new clients, January the 20th to the 22nd. For our existing clients, they will be there the 21st and 22nd here in Dallas. Um, everyone that's listening is more than welcome uh, to attend um, the flyer that Lance has there. Uh, you can uh, just follow the flyer. Right. Um, you could also email us at info at Prosperity Mint for more information. And uh, you can actually acquire the precious metals at our website. Um, I would say if you're going to be coming to the overall conference, um, I would say if you're not going to be coming to the conference, you just want to buy uh, precious metals, you could do it at our website, prosperity, uh, www.prosperitymint.com. But if you're going to become a client of ours, um, start that process and then uh, you would contact us directly because uh, there's a different process that we have for our clients than our customers. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, for purchasing the precious metals. And we are going to put ourselves in the position to endure this, but more importantly, we're going to put ourselves in a position to profit from this. We are, we are not just in this thing to survive. Um, we are in this thing to actually acquire wealth that we control so that we can get back the prosperity that's been lost and to live within our birthright. And I will tell you the system, if that is your overall will and you have the control of assets to to uh, do that, it will not hinder you or will actually benefit you. And it will work to ensure that that will be done. Your will. Yes. Beautiful. So. That's really where we are. We don't have much time. We, we don't have time to play. We don't have, to, you know, if uh, we don't have, you know, time to, uh, well, what about, we, hey, you, you, you're either in or you, wow. you, you're you not. And I definitely, uh, you know, there's different ways. I'm not saying that this is the only way, but I'll tell you this. History has proven that this way is an assured way. It, it You don't ever have to think that this works one thing about this i don't think this works i know this works i know this works so definitely um engage in that um registration uh, the rooms are going fast but we will make accommodations for uh people just just i would say if you're going to come um make sure you make payment and, and contact us uh, send us an e- uh, email saying that you made payment um, and show proof of payment. Um, you know, please do that. And then also just let me know that you came by way of uh, listening to us here on Lance's uh, platform. And we are good to go. Lance, did I leave anything out? No, you were quite thorough and you made it so easy to understand that even a rock would understand it. And you took your time, you went through with a fine tooth comb. And I know there's going to be questions, but it's going to be very little because you really, really broke it down to make us understand. And that's one attribute that you have that I don't know anybody else like you that way. You, you really break it down. And other subjects that others might consider boring, you can speak about it and it will be on the edge of our seat. That is your ability. That's your talent. That is your gift. And it's just not something that was thrown at you. You have it, but you know how to work it. And that's a beautiful thing. And you always enlighten me. And I thank you for that. But you know, the the same is here is (laughs) I, I so much appreciate and look forward to the things that we're going to be doing together. Uh, Because one of the things is that we're, we're going to have so many options in this whole thing. And, and at our seminar, we are going to give you defined things to do. We are going to show you what has worked for us before we is not, it's, it's not a, a multi-level marketing situation. This is historical truths. We, we show you these things. And so some of the, the, 
the questions that you may have, the seminar itself, the value of the seminar and the value of the opportunity to prepare, the value is what we always look at. I never, ever look at anything by price. I look at, I only engage in things that have value. If it has value, it sustains life. If it's a price, that means it's manipulated by man. Mm. So, I'm looking, I don't, I don't live and I don't move by price. I move by value. So very important there. But um, if there are any questions, uh, I know we're not taking any questions, but if you have any questions, you definitely can uh, email us at info at prosperity mint. Um, Just give us some time. We'll get back to it. Uh, Register as soon as you possibly can uh, for the overall seminar for, um, the new clients is a thousand dollars for new clients and that will cover uh, your overall participation in the virtual class uh, either day because you can actually take them both days but it, the information will be pretty much the same, same um, and there is it's a lot of the precious metals that's going to be there then that will cover your entry for the Friday seminar here in Dallas and then that will uh, uh, take care of your entry for Saturday and Sunday as well and so that's what where we are. And everyone here is basically uh, you would be a new client. But if you are a client of ours before um, and you already know who you are, uh, that you won't uh, you won't you won't take the virtual class um, and you won't have to be there on Friday. But if it's something that you wanted to do for yourself, um, you know that you can do that in their fee uh, from for our existing clients. And you already know who you are if you if you're here. Uh, listening that is seven hundred dollars for the seminar yes. um, and this is being put on by prosperity mint our company in, in legacy um, legacy management and they're going to be taking care of uh, the trust and foundation the structure getting a a, a a irrevocable trust how that works for you and why that's so important in foundations as well so for so that you can have tax immunity or our tax avoidance so very important. So that's really, you know, the part. And I, I just want everyone, you already know something is wrong. Um, it is time that we position ourselves because one of the things that's very important is this, is that when we go through these economic crises, there's an opportunity to create generational wealth if you have the overall money to do it. And I will tell you this, wealth is never determined by how much cash you hold, but by how many assets you control. Because assets are money. Cash isn't. Wow. Okay. And you, you have to break that addi- addiction. I was so funny, Lance. It was, well, I'm going to just leave on this. I was, I was talking to, to one person. And this is what happens when we get schooled the wrong way. I asked someone, I said, hey, there was a group. It was a business owner that was there. And he said that cash is money. And I understood. I I gave the example of the reason why. And he said, no, it's it's still money. I said, okay. I said, so once you think about about this, folks, Mm -hmm. if you had a store, would you allow me to come in your store here in the United States with a Mexican peso, (laughs) uh, the, the paper paper peso, and buy some goods and services from you. Would you accept that as payment? The person said, no, of course not. I said, okay. I said, all right, why? He said, why? Because we don't accept pesos for payment. This money? (laughs) Yeah, right, 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 right. right. So, okay. I said, you're right. It's a currency. It's not money. I said, so, so I said, okay. So if I had a Mexican peso, but it was a Mexican gold, Centurial peso, central peso that says fifty dollars on it, but it's a gold coin. Will you accept that gold coin for payment? You know what he said, Lance? What did he say? He said no. He said no. What? When I said okay, I said, well, you've just been schooled very well, and he thought I was saying he was right. Right. I said you've been schooled. I said your financial education is off because if you are educated financially, you would never do that. He said, what do you mean? 
He said, no, I, you, you couldn't pay me in it. I said, okay. So I said, do you have something in your store that's $50? I said, yeah. But so you, you wouldn't take a, a Mexican gold coin peso that says $50 for your service of it? No. Just like I won't take the paper. I said, that's because you don't know the difference between currency and money. That $50 peso of gold coin is worth almost $2,500. Yes. Mm-hmm. But that piece of paper is worth nothing. Nothing. He said, what? I said, yeah, the gold coin, because of the melt value, the content of that coin is worth over twenty five hundred dollars. So you mean to tell me you wouldn't give me you wouldn't allow me to give you twenty five hundred dollars in money for something that you got is fifty dollars. You know what he said? What did he say? Nothing. (laughs) That's the thing. We don't know. What we don't know, we're liable for. Ignorance of the law is no excuse, but it is a liability. Each and every time. Each and every time. Each and every time. So we want to put ourselves and our tribe and our people in position so that they will be able to engage in the profitable transfer of the overall economic demise of the U.S., every empire must die. You ain't got to go down with it. You don't have to get, go down with it. Don't let them deport your overall energy of your labor. Your energy of your labor is your birthright. It should bring the overall birthright prosperity to you. And there's ways that you have to do it. And so we will show you and help you. So Lance, as always, brother, thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Always informative. looking forward to doing so much more. I'm looking forward. To and uh, but we, we, we got to talk for just to some of the things that uh, we're going to be doing. Yes. And if you need something, definitely uh, let me know. And uh, but uh, let's talk tomorrow, too. Yeah. Uh, Lance. Just call me when you're ready. Um, I got I, you. I got the thing you sent me. And so um, oh, definitely. I, I just want to make sure. Right. And then we, we so thank you so much. Thank you. Brother. Um, so. All right. My brother. Hey. You have a wonderful night. Thank you for the information. This will be up ASAP along with the flyer and we'll be moving forward. And I can't wait to hear from you because I'm very, very excited. Very excited. Yep. You and I both, brother. All right. Okay, my brother. Okay. Thank you so much. Peace. Peace out. Bye-bye.